In today's video, we're going to be photographing flames, candles, and smoke. I'm going to go and grab a lighter, set up my camera, and I'll see you in just a sec. Hi guys, I'm Ben from Adapt Lux, and yesterday we are taking a look at some flames, some candles, and some smoke. Now we've previously taken a look at smoke, so if you just want to know how to get some really cool ethereal shots of smoke, head over to that video, I'll link it up in the top corner. Um, but today we're going to be taking a picture of the actual flames, we're going to be trying to capture some of the candle as well, and we're going to see what happens when we blow out those candles, see if we can't grab a little bit of the residual smoke left over. Now I've got lots of candles to take a look at, um, I've got everything from the uh, relatively simple and plain ones up to uh, some more elaborate candles. This one's a concrete candle from Kooky Candles. It's got wood wicks uh, and they all smell really nice. So that's a little bonus as well. Once I start lighting these, uh, my house is going to uh, start to smell rather lovely. So that's what I'm going to do. Uh, first of all is get a picture of a flame. Now that's the simplest one that we can possibly do. So we'll start there and we'll start adding a little bit of light to those more complicated shots as we go. So as I mentioned, there's a few different types of shots that I want to get today. And the easiest is going to be just taking a picture of the flame produced by the candle. It's going to be relatively easy simply because the flames themselves create light, which means we don't need to add any light in or balance anything out. Later on, when we try and capture a little bit of the wick and the candle as well as the uh, the flame, that's going to be a little bit trickier. And then blowing out the candle and getting the smoke is going to be trickier once again. So let's start simple. I've got my uh, concrete kooky candle here uh, with its wood wicks just getting going. And I'm going to set up my camera so that we're looking just across the top of the candle at the flame. Now the flames on these are really quite wide so that makes it really nice for uh, both landscape and portrait style shots. I'm going to try a couple of, uh, of landscape ones first and see if I can't capture some interesting flickering and some nice lights going on from these flames. It probably comes as no surprise that the trickiest thing about flame photography is going to be your exposure. Uh, taking a picture of a raw light source like this uh, is going to leave you um, slightly overexposed if you don't compensate for the fact that it's creating its own light. So you need to deliberately underexpose all of the background and everything surrounding it and capture only that flame, which can be really interesting. You can get some nice stills, but if you're trying video as well, you can try a lot of slow-mo and get some of that interesting flickering and changing of the flame, especially if you start blowing on it. Now one of the wicks in our candle is uh, doing slightly better than the other. The smaller flame is actually leaving a few embers on this wooden wick. So what I want to do is get a little bit closer and see if we can't capture a few of those embers while they're inside the flame. Now to get closer, I'm going to use a trick that a lot of you have been asking about. Uh, in the last couple of videos, we've been using this little Raynox clip-on attachment and people have been asking what happens if you attach this macro adapter to a macro lens? Well, the answer is simply that you get a lot more magnification. So I'm going to clip this onto my 100 millimeter f2.8 Tekina lens and see how much magnification uh, we get just from adding that in. So as you can see, adding that Raynox adapter to the front of my macro lens has added a huge amount of magnification. We can now get much closer to those glowing embers. And you can see that the flame on this side is really struggling. The wax hasn't quite had time to draw up the wick yet, um, but it is leaving us with these really nice embers on this wooden wick. Uh, you can see the flames occasionally flickering in there. Uh, so the, the candle is still lit, um, but we've got this um, changing landscape, almost like a mountainscape of embers glowing around the edge of the wick, which I think is really interesting. Now I've had to up my exposure to compensate for the fact that the flame is smaller and there's less light being created. And you can tell the difference there because our background is actually a little bit brighter. 
Previously, the background was completely black because we were exposing for the bright flame of the fully lit candle. Now, because we've got less flame, uh, everything has to be uh, slightly compensated for. And that's going to be a theme for all of these types of shots, is that you're going to be constantly changing your exposure to compensate for what the flame is doing and the type of shot that you're wanting to get. So I've got a new candle. This one is a little bit taller. Um, it's actually sat on top of its case here, um, but it's a nice tall flame and uh, it's a really nice angle to look across from. I've actually changed to portrait orientation to try and capture as much of the height of this flame as possible, which I think is working really well. I've of course had to change my exposure again, um, which means that the uh, the flame is nicely exposed. It's not too bright. You'll be able to tell when it's too bright because the middle of the flame will be completely white when it should be that yellowish orange color. Um, now I wanted to capture a little bit of the surrounding area of this candle. It's a nice red and I think that will make a nice base to the uh, the photograph. However, the, uh, the light that the candle is producing and the ambient light in my room is actually not enough to keep up with the brightness of the flame itself. So I'm going to bring in uh, some extra light in the form of the Adapt Look Studio and a single white lighting arm S. I'm going to set this up on a little mini tripod next to my candle and have it so that it's lighting the surrounding area and the wick. So then, as you can see, we've got a single white lighting arm plugged in now, uh, and I've brought this round so that it's coming down from the top of the candle. Now, obviously, I've not got this over the top of the actual candle. Uh, the arms are quite robust, but they're not fireproof, so uh, I don't want to be getting the, uh, the flame touching the end of my candle, not least because it will burn it, but also because it will leave soot and things all over the lens. So even if you're uh, up here and away from the main heat of the candle, uh, whatever you put up here will slowly get dirty, so just be conscious of that when you're positioning your lights. Having light come down from above though is really nice. It's lighting the front part of the candle just here. It's not quite reaching the front down here, so it is fading out towards the bottom of the photograph and it's bringing all of that red of the wax into the shot. Now I'm really happy with this. I'm going to take this shot and then I'm going to start blowing out my candles. Moving on to blowing out my candles, we've made a couple of changes. Firstly, I've moved my lighting arm behind the candle. This is going to shine the light through any smoke that is created when I blow out the candle. Uh, we saw this technique in our smoke tutorial, which again was linked up in the top right hand corner, but I'll also link it down in the description if you want a little bit more uh, detail on how to capture those interesting smoke shots. That time we were using flash and we will be using flash in just a moment for an alternative technique. But for now, I'm sticking with my uh, uh, super white S arm um, and I'm going to be blowing out my candle, letting that light shine through the smoke. But I'm going to have my camera set on super slow motion. Hopefully this will create a really nice slow moving video of the smoke reacting to my breath as I blow out the candle. So using video is all well and good if you're a videographer, but if you just want some still shots of your smoke and your candle, uh, the way to do that is by using flash. That's going to freeze the motion of your smoke as it rises off the candle. Uh, so I'm going to grab my flash lighting arms, plug them into my pod, and see if I can't get some nice still shots of the smoke rising from my candle as I blow it out. So as you can see, I've now got a flash arm plugged into the control pod. I've got my IR trigger on the top of the camera ready to uh, trigger my arm. And I've got a little uh, shutter release cable here because we're going to be doing a little bit of manual timing. There's going to be a little bit of trial and error and it might or might not work. So I'm going to be blowing out my candle 
hitting my trigger, watching my flash go off, and that should give me a nice freeze frame of whatever is happening with the smoke in the moment that I blow out my candle. Now, as you can imagine, this probably is going to take a lot of luck to get some interesting shots. It depends where the smoke wants to go, um, but with enough patience, you should be able to get some interesting shots. Now I have changed my exposure again. As you can see here, we're actually really underexposed. You can't see any of the candle. And that's because we've taken away that continuous light that was shining on the, uh, on the wax and on the wick. What we do have though is the flash. So when the flash goes off, it will add that light back in. We just can't see it right now. So when I blow out my candle, the exposure that I've set here, which is now 1 1 60th of a second, ISO 500 and F11, just to get a little bit more depth in the smoke, uh, we are underexposed to the naked eye, but when we take our exposure, we're going to be correctly exposed for not only the smoke, but also for the candle itself. Let's give it a go now. I'm going to blow out my candle and hit my shutter release, uh, and hopefully we'll get a nice picture of some smoke. So when it comes to the settings for the flash for taking shots like this, you need to have your flash set to level five, which is the fastest possible uh, duration of light. So um, if you've got level two sets, that's going to be really bright and the flash will go on for much longer, but uh, you'll get a lot more brightness and a lot more movement in your images. If you're at level five, the, the duration will be really fast with a lot less brightness, um, but it will freeze any motion that's going on. So the smoke is actually moving really fast, especially when I've just blown it, and we don't want any of that movement in our shot. Uh, what I do want is to freeze all of that motion as much as possible, and to be taking pictures really quickly. The recycle time on level five is much faster than at level two, so uh, I'm going to be able to take pictures one after another after another until my smoke has died down and I can relight my candle and go all over again. I've had a lot of fun playing around with my candles today, trying not to spill wax everywhere, trying not to burn myself uh, with various degrees of success. Now, <laughs> I've really enjoyed the different techniques that we've been using uh, to get these different types of shots. The, the bare naked candle flames uh, I thought were really interesting, but perhaps a little bit plain because most candle flames look fairly similar to one another. Uh, there's uh, millions of photographs of flames just on their own out there adding a little bit of light, changing what you're actually framing, so adding into the, the mix the wick and the wax uh, and lighting that separately, that gives you a little bit more creativity. And then of course, adding more light and using that slow motion and the flash to capture that uh, moment when you blow out the candle, I think that's really interesting. I'd like to know from you guys what you thought and what uh, was your favorite style of shot today. Whether or not you'll be trying, taking some pictures of candles, and of course, whether or not you enjoyed this video. Let me know by uh, hitting the like button, and of course, hitting the subscribe button, because there's lots more macro photography tutorials, ideas, and inspiration coming in the future. For now, that is all that I've got time for. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.